Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosmos River College in Sacramento, California. This is another proof in my series, Proofs in Differential Calculus. And this one, I have a couple of options of uh, theorems to prove here, but I think I'm going to prove the very first one that E, the number E, which is 2.718281828. 904590 something else another anyway that number e is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x power there are a couple things that we'll need to know prior to starting the proof so let's take a look at those uh, I guess it's more than a couple uh, first you have to know the definition of a derivative as a limit because we're gonna go ahead and use that in our proof even though if you look at this this doesn't say anything about a derivative Okay, but we're going to still need that information. We'll also need to know that the derivative of the natural log is just 1 over x. And that was, I proved that in a, the video right before this. So if you're looking through the playlist, you'll see it right before this video. And finally, you'll need to know uh, several properties of logarithms. Also, obviously, you'll need to know calculus. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this proof. And I'll go ahead and start writing proof here. Let's see, proof. Now, uh, most people uh, likely initially would get stuck because they don't know where to start with something like this. Usually when I see a function that's being raised to a power that itself is a function, I immediately think logarithms. I should do something with logarithms. Well, in this case, uh, it's not so obvious what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start by saying let f of x equal the natural log of x. That makes no sense to anybody right now. However, uh, this will help us out quite a bit because then we can say, well, uh, f prime of x is equal to, this is just from our prerequisite knowledge, 1 over x. And then one little thing up after that that is still going to seem somewhat vague, but for right now it will, but will help us along our proof for this is that uh, we have therefore uh, f prime evaluated at 1 if you just plug 1 in that function the derivative function you get 1 okay great now there's what I'm gonna do is take an alternate form of f prime evaluated at 1 just so that we can uh, compare these two values so I'll say also f prime evaluated at 1 and this time I'm gonna Go ahead and write it in the middle of the screen. F prime evaluated at 1 is defined to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. That's just the definition of the derivative. So if you're evaluating uh, the derivative of a function at 1, it is just the limit as h approaches 0 of this quotient. This can be modified a little bit, not very much. We're just we happen to know what h or what f is in this case. F is the natural log of x, so this is the limit as h approaches zero of the natural log of one plus h minus the natural log of one all over h. And of course, natural log of one is just zero. So I'm going to write this as the limit as h approaches zero of I could write it as the natural log of 1 plus h over h, but I'm going to write it slightly differently. I'm going to say it's 1 over h times the natural log of 1 plus h. The reason why I'm doing this is because, uh, well, one, I can, and two, it allows us to get what we want. We want, I'm going to point an arrow, we want 1 plus x to the 1 over x. If you notice, the natural log of 1 plus h is right here, and I have a coefficient. And that coefficient I can bring up into the exponent. That's the property of logarithms that we needed. So I'll go ahead and say that this is all equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the natural log of 1 plus h. And that 1 plus h is being raised to the 1 over h power. And I'm not a huge fan of of not bracketing that out so I'm gonna bracket this this happen to have uh, a love of parentheses I think so anyhow what we have just shown is that f prime evaluated at 1 is equal to this limit 
So let me go ahead and write that in front. F prime evaluated at 1 is actually equal to that limit, which, by the way, we also know that F prime evaluated at 1 is equal to 1. So this limit must therefore be equal to 1. How is that going to help me? Well, I see that right here we have 1 plus x to the 1 over x. I'll just pretend they're h's as the limit as x approaches 0. So that's looking pretty enticing. What I'm going to go ahead and now turn to is this side of the equation, e. I'm going to say, therefore, e to the first power, I'm going to sneak a 1 into that, is equal to, and instead of 1, I'm going to replace it with the limit that we just created, e to the limit as h approaches 0 of the natural log of the quantity 1 plus h raised to the 1 over h and quantity. Remember, that limit is actually 1. So that's just a fancy way of saying the number 1. Now, from properties of limits, which I didn't specifically write down was a prerequisite, but you're in calculus, you should know it is a prerequisite piece of knowledge. So properties of limits, uh, I can bring that limit out of the exponent as long as the limit exists, which it does. This limit is still going to equal e to the first power, so it still exists. So the limit is h approaches 0 of e to the natural log of junk. And that junk is just the parentheses 1 plus h to the 1 over h power. Well, we happen to know that e to the natural log of something is just what's inside the natural log. They're in, in other words, exponents and, natural, and logarithms undo each other. They're inverses of each other. So that means that this limit, as h approaches 0, can be rewritten. Remember, the exponential function base e is the inverse of the natural logarithm base e, so they cancel each other out. They undo each other. This can be re rewritten as the limit, as h approaches 0, of 1 plus h to the 1 over h power. Again, I'm using the property. Uh, maybe I'll write it in a different color just so that you can see it off to the side. I'm using the property that e to the natural log of anything you have there is just going to be what's on the inside of the logarithm. They undo each other. Now, this is actually done. This proof is it doesn't matter what letter you're using. We happen to be using h here. However, I could just swap out h's with x's. So thus, e to the first power is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x power. It's such a cool little proof, and it's a, um, the type of proof that is common in upper division and graduate level mathematics where you start going, well, maybe upper division mathematics, graduate level mathematics, are, it's even more uh, complicated, obviously, but in upper division mathematics, you generally start proofs, some, uh, often start proofs, going in a direction that people often would never have thought about. They just, they, they wonder for a while, why are you going in that direction? Why did you create a function and let it equal the natural log? Well, I kind of had a clue because, again, like I said early on, I had a function to a function pow power. So that told me that somehow I want to sneak a natural log into the situation. But often, stuff like this is not so obvious even to a mathematician. Some Often it's the case that this is found through trial and error, and then uh, it's made more and more elegant over time just from people kind of refining the proof. So, But this is the actual proof of it, that e is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x power. Uh, you are probably also responsible for the other uh, limit version of e. That's actually not so bad. Just let x equal 1 over n, and you have the proof done for you. So I'm not going to do it here. So I'll just call it quits on this proof. Q-E-D. Uh, <laughs>